Yum, yum! Hello, my name is Pedro and today's quick flow is about using bone weight painting as a masking mechanism for multiple inputs. Usually when we go about that, we end up with some stack of layers. The problem with layers is that they have a fixed priority order. So for example, here I have three layers, zero, one, and two, and you can see I can paint in here, but let's say that I wanted to have the red to go on top of the blue and the green in this particular part. I can't have that happening because the layers above will have priority over this first one. So to fix it, I actually have to go into the other layers and delete the information they have on that area so that I reveal the first layer's information. Now, this is easy to fix when we have a couple of inputs, but when you start to have, let's say, dozens of inputs, it's, it's going to be very cumbersome to do this. That's why bone weight painting doesn't work in this layer type system, but it, it's more like channels. And the priority is assigned as you paint, not in a fixed manner like with layers. So usually weights are normalized to one, meaning the sum of all the channels is equal to one. And so let's say I paint on channel two. So channel two is going to get uh, big like this instead of this. But then when the values are normalized so that they fit back to one, the channel two values are maintained. Only the other channels are scaled to fit the value of one. And so this will allow me to, as I paint on channel two, I get priority on that channel. So visually, it's just like me painting some red in here and then painting some blue or in this case, some green and some blue. And then I just I don't have to worry about priority. Whatever I paint goes on top of what I have. So let's look into this in Houdini. So the initial setup is that I have this grid with some boxes copied onto its points. And I have two attributes, scale and color, to which I have some options, some several inputs that I want to distribute on the grid so that the boxes pick up. To do that sort of painting, I do need at the moment to have some bones. I I've made a featured request so that this is not necessary in the future, but as of now, I do need the, these dummy bones in here. So let me put here a bone capture stop, and I will choose that hierarchy. Then I can put uh, capture layer paint, and if I try to paint something right away, let me increase the brush size, and you'll notice that I won't see much. So to see something, first off, I have to actually select the bone. Let's say I'm going to select bone two, and I have to come here and put selected capture region. So now I can see me painting this uh, bone's influence, this bone's weight. And you'll notice if I change this to, let's say, bone three, and I start to paint bone three in here, in a part that intersects the previous bone weight, you'll notice that that will be taken out from the previous bone painting. So this gives priority to whatever I'm painting. There's no uh, there's no bone with more priority than the other bones. Whatever I paint gets priority over the other channel. So to make use of whatever is being uh, generated in here, I need a node called capture attribute unpack. And what it will create is two arrays. The first array will be the actual weights for each bone. And the first and the second array is the indices of which uh, which which bone these weights actually belong to. So these two arrays will be used to pick a value from these arrays and to weight them, to multiply them and to scale them. So if I put this in here and I come inside this attribute fob, I have the scale array and the color array. And for each element in the index array of the bone painting, I'm going to pick a value from the scale and the color array. I'm going to multiply them by the corresponding weight and I'm going to add them to the previous weighted values. And so if I connect this in here, this is what I end up with. So let me go back here to the capture paint. And so let's say you can see that now as I paint this, I have a smooth transition between the boxes color and scaling value. If I choose the bone one, which is the one that has 000 and 000 on the scale and the color, you notice that that will act as I'm uh, taking out uh, I'm taking out the boxes. I'm scaling them down and painting them black. Otherwise, the other ones have some color, some vibrant color, and some shape that you'll have. You'll see a smooth transition between as you as you paint. This technique to me is very useful for custom rigging, for environment, and whatever, whenever I want to have a shared influence of some parameter. And I hope you enjoy it as well. And let me know what you used it for. Cheers. Yum yum.